In few minutes, I'm going to give you seven kingdom success principles that you need in this journey to make it. Because we got to make it, brothers and sisters. Someone is saying, is that what will make me go to heaven? Yes. Because you will not look at someone and be jealous. You can still go and buy the same dress you are jealous over. When God provides for you, you don't become jealous about anyone. You become good friend to everyone because you can help anyone. You know what makes us angry, envy, and angry with others? It's competition. Because what you have, even, I also want it, but I cannot afford it. So I hate you for that. But when God gives us and provides for us, you are never jealous about anyone. You are not in competition with anyone. There is, somebody said yesterday during our meeting, she said this pie, everyone has a slice on that pie. We had a powerful teaching yesterday on sisterhood. And they were talking about there's a space for everyone in the kingdom of God. Don't compete with anybody. That's the spirit I want to kill. For us to be successful, number one, do not compete with anyone. If you read the book of Matthew 25, it is the story. I'll quote some verses. I'm using New King James Version. Matthew 25, give me. I'm going to talk. It's from verse 14 to 29. The story I'm talking about is the Lord who gave these talents to his servants and went away. So Jesus starts by saying that the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a trip. He called together his servants and gave them money to invest for him whilst he was gone. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. None of us can tell me God did not give you anything. You are lying. Is there anyone who says, I have no, no gift, I have no talent? It's inside of you. You just don't know it. You have no idea what is inside of you. All of us, we have got talents. You know, when they see a child being born, they come and their hands are like this. Every child is born like this. What is that? They are holding something for the world. Your talent is not for you. It's for the world. The gifts are for the world. Number one, we are stewards of the resources that God has entrusted to us while we are here on this earth. Each and every one of us, we own absolutely nothing. This is why I gave you last week my testimony. When I was praying for money, God give me money. I want to make it. I want to be a millionaire. He asked me, he said, baby girl, that's a wrong prayer. You don't ask me for a million dollars. When Abraham died, did he die with that million dollars? I said, no, Lord. He said, where is the million dollars? He said, here on this earth. Do you know any millionaire who was buried with his million dollars? Anyone who has read or heard of anyone bu uh, um, buried with his or her wealth? Hallelujah. God wants us to be good stewards. I'm giving you principles, <laughs> biblical principles that are in the word of God. Verse 25, verse 15. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Each according to what? According to what? According to what? Ability. According to what, guys? Ah, come on, children of God. Don't worry about those moving out. Come Can you focus here? Focus here. I want you to get this. God gave them according to what? God gave them according to what? Let's shout everybody. Do you have ability? 
Verse 15, he gave everyone each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on. Guys, I want you to look, number one, each according to his own ability. And the second, each in proportion to his own personal ability. Personal ability. God will never give you something he's not going to bake up. Because of what is inside of you. Number two, success isn't measured by how talented you are. You are compared to how talented. It's not measured according to how someone else is talented, but according to how talented you are. God gives according to how talented you are. So no one should tell you that you've got nothing. When you sit in your house and you think, I don't know how to start the business. I don't know how to do this. You have it. Don't compare yourself with someone else. If someone is going to start a restaurant, don't start copy somebody. Inside of you, you've got your own different idea. God is going to give you. If you are a couple, God will give you the spirit to do it together. Partner together in that business. So don't despise your wife or your husband's idea. Hallelujah. He gives us according. Verse 16, immediately, the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gave five more. Notice immediately. Immediately. That means to take action. That means no procrastination. That means get on with it. If you come with your plan today, get on with that plan in Jesus' mighty name. It will succeed. Get on with that plan and you will succeed. Notice the phrase there again. They traded with them. That means making the best possible use of those opportunities God is going to give to you. God is going to open new doors in this new season for wealth transfer and prosperity. And I want to encourage you, get onto it quickly. Get onto it quickly and do it. I didn't want to just say, come with your plan and I want to pray for it. And I didn't tell you what the Lord said. That would be unfaithfulness on my part. And you go, you don't know what to do. No, the Bible said, in the mouth of many counsels. And I'm one of the counsels today. Hallelujah. Number three, take constant, consistent action. From today, take consistent action. Don't go according to what other people are saying. Go according to your plan. You said you brought a plan, right? Be consistent and listen. When the Lord says change the route, change it. Amen. Change it. Don't be afraid. Because the ultimate success or the secret to make the best of your opportunities, God gives you is being consistent. Being consistent. Don't say today you are doing that. Tomorrow you begin to do something different. No, 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 no. Be consistent. Do you understand MQ? Be consistent in your business. MQ started his business. And I'm encouraging you today in that business. Be consistent, son. And you see what God will do for you. Be flexible with what God can do with you. Number four. All life asks us, ask us to do is to make measurable progress in reasonable time. Make progress in what? In what? Aha! Don't jump. If I try to go up there and leave these steps, my business will collapse tomorrow because I was not willing to learn. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes you what? You gain. The other time, the business will not make a profit. Don't dump it simply because it hasn't made a profit this month. Just try, try, try again. If at first you what? What do you do? You try, try, try again until you succeed. This is what the word of God tells us. What is God's response to my, to my business? What is God's response? 
Anything God breaks up, come on. <laughs> That's the secret key. Anything that is the agenda with God in it, if it's a business, it succeeds. That's the whole secret. That's the whole secret. Come on. Your business plan. <laughs> I will not say what I wanted to say. I'll say it next week. So God responds to the person who develops their God-given potential. He responds with increase. He responds to the person who double the value of their effectiveness in that business. Put value. Someone's mind is already closed. <laughs> this is what is killing you because you don't want to learn and you don't want to change. This is where you are where you are today. This is why uh, the white people, I'm sorry to say this, they put something, they said, if you want to hide something from an African, what do you do? So I went, I read for you, and I brought the information for you. And your mind is already closed. You are not even thinking, how oh, what business? Listen, write the notes, record it. You will need it tomorrow. Don't be jealous when you see someone rising. That's the problem. The same information, someone will make it. The same information, someone will, will leave the church to become a witch to kill you. Because the same person was sitting exactly in this same service with you. And they took the information, flushed it down the toilet. It's not useful for them. Matthew 25, 21 to 23. It says the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. He had been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together, guys. Learn to celebrate others. Jealousy must go in Jesus' name. Support others. Celebrate someone's success. Don't be jealous. It's a demon. We read a verse yesterday that says jealousy is what? Demonic. Jealousy is a demonic spirit, Winnie. It's a demon. You need to cast it out of your heart. Every time you feel jealous that someone has started a business, someone is doing well, someone is rising, you need deliverance. I said, what do you do? You go, you say, how did you do it, my brother? And when I come and ask you, don't lie and say, oh, it came from Japan. No, help me, your sister. I came with a genuine heart to ask. That's the problem with us. When people come and say, how do I do it? We tend to lie and, op and oppress information. Help the person. I say, don't copy that person's business, but use the ideas and information to find ways to, uh, to see how your business is going to flourish with those ideas you hear from others. We don't live in a vacuum. Once you have got a wrong motive, God will not bless you. This is why we are not blessed. The mindset is evil. I want to show them. I want to show them who I am. That's why you are where you are. This is why we are where we are today. Because the motive is what? Success is not measured by well you do compared to how well someone else does. That's not success. If someone's business goes boom and they're up there and your business is still struggling, it's okay. One day at a what? You will get there. Focus, be consistent like what I said. It will happen. I'm not going to be talking about this next week. I'm already on another level. But I wanted to come because of the prophecy that came to those who received that prophecy. Who will receive this word? The Spirit of the Lord told me, your lives will never be the same again. The life will never. They may envy you, they may pull you down, but they will not. You know why? You cannot compete with anointing. You can never compete with grace. No matter how much you do, you cannot pull it down. Never think about that. Prosperity and abundance will come. 
We are broke because we don't really believe that it is God's will for us to be rich. All rich means abundantly supplied. Rich is not necessarily an amount of money. Come on. It's just a simple definition. All rich means to have more than you need. Rich means to have what? Is that in your Bible? Find it. I don't know. Is it 2 Corinthians 2, 9, 8? Or is 1 Corinthians 9, 8? That says God is going to give you more than enough so that you can be able to give to others. You see why you don't bring offering? You are broke. You are poor. Ah, come on, be angry. I said you are broke and you are poor. You don't have more than enough to give access. You are passing those people in the street. You don't hate them. You love them. But you are broke and poor. Am I right? Am I right, guys? You don't have enough to give them. You are actually making sure oh, I'll be able to pay my bills and rent this month. That's what it means to be broke. If you have less than 10,000 in your bank account, you are just as broke as me. That's where we're going to come out in Jesus' name. That's what this message is all about. We need to come out of there in Jesus' mighty name. Number five, you must know and believe that it is God's will for you to be prosperous. It is the will of God to be rich and abundantly supplied. Did you find the verse? And God is able to bless you what? So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I want the version that says, in all that you have, you'll be able to give to others. You can't give to others when you have nothing. You live from paycheck to paycheck. It means it's not enough. God is not only interested in you having money, but he wants you to manage it wisely as a good steward. He can give you more and more if you become a conduit. I'll tell you one story. In Zimbabwe one day, I became very angry. You know, I used to get money. Money would come money. Mulatari, I had money. And you know, the whole clan used to look up to me and my husband. We would give funerals. Every person would first call us. We would give. Everybody, we were the youngest in the family. But we had money. And one day I said, I said, while I was talking to my mother, I said, I'm tired. That's exactly the words I said. I'm tired of just giving everyone. And nobody gives me. I'm just tired of it. From that day, from that day, the supply was cut off for me. I'm not lying to you. I'm not lying to you. Someone thinks pastor is crazy. No, I'm helping you. Because I know what God, if he's going to bless you, don't think of yourself. Don't be selfish. Don't have a wrong motive. And you're presenting your plans before God today. And your mind is so wrong. Don't do that. If you are the Joseph of your family, Keep doing that. Keep doing it. Don't complain. Don't complain. Don't complain. You cut off the line of supply. My husband gave you a testimony the other day of how God will ask him every time he bought a new trousers. He said, give this, give this person. Give that person. Give this person. And one day he said, for how long am I going to do this? When am I going to wear my own trousers? That was the last day he heard that voice. God is not stupid, guys. He will test us. He will test you. Your obedience, number one. Your faithfulness, number two. How humble you are. If he asks you for 10 cents, are you going to say yes? Or you'll be like Elhanan when you give him a slice of bread and you're holding the whole of there. You say, Elhanan, can I have just a little thing? He says, no, Aniti, I don't want. He doesn't know that daddy has got the whole loaf in the pantry. Don't be like that. Let it go. The Bible says, throw your bread upon the what? Upon the what? The waters. And you'll see it after how many? Many days. The blessing of the Lord will make you rich. Kingdom number six principle. Go to work on a regular basis. Start a personal development plan. I think you did. You started. That's good. Now don't just work on your job. And in your business, work on yourself. 
change some things. I told you last week we did a calculation of 24 hours a day. And we talked about how we use those 24 hours. Now implement it. This is the time. A principle of discipline. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. I said don't sleep how many hours? Did you ever hear the expression, the rich they get richer and the poor they get poorer? Have you ever heard that expression? Have you ever heard that? The rich will get what? Richer. And the poor will become? It sounds harsh, huh? But it is biblical truth, unfortunately. It is biblical what? Matthew 25 verse 29. For to everyone who has more will be given. Uh, I'm not the one saying it. Put it there. Let's read it together. Matthew 25, verse 29. It's not pastor. It's a harsh statement, yes. It's biblical truth. Let's read it. Ah, lift your head. Come on, read it together. Let's go. For to everyone who has more, we will be given. And he will have abundance. Is that fair? Is that fair? You want more Africa mentality. You got to break it today in Jesus' mighty name. The concept of receiving donations. I want, I want, I want, I want. Every time donations. We are waiting for donations. We are going to build our own church. We are indigenous enough to do it for ourselves. Uh, don't even clap like that. I got people calling me right now. Pastor, are you starting building? They are ready. For me to do it. Even by myself. With God I can do it. Oh yeah. Don't say no pastor. I say it with my God. I can do it. Uh -uh. Even say amen. Because this is true what I'm saying. Oh. I'm telling you guys. It's the Bible. Everyone who has more. Who get more. The reason the rich get richer. And the poor gets poorer. It's because the rich take advantage of the opportunities God presents to them. And the poor, they sit waiting. Waiting. Who's going to give me 200? Who's going to give me a scholarship? You can have a business. Ah. Yes, I'm an international student. So I can't have a business. You can. You can take yourself to school. You can by the grace of God. I said by the grace of God. You can. If you receive it only. Because God is going to open doors. That will shock you. There's an international student who told me, Pastor, come with me. She took me to a bank account. I almost dropped it. I was shocked. International student. F1 visa. Ay, 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 ay. God can do it. I said God can do it. God can do it. I almost fainted. I said F1. I don't know what it means F1. But that's what she told me. She said I'm an F1 pastor. Showed me her visa. But what I saw in that account. <laughs> and she showed me. The transactions. How she has made that 800,000 US. I'm like, are you serious, honey? She said, yes, pastor. God opened the door. I grabbed the opportunity. I grabbed the what? Don't let opportunities pass you by and just to say, languish and crying in your poverty. Rise up, child of God. Wake up. You can do it in Jesus' name. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? If others are doing it, why can't I also do it? Are they special? Number seven. God is a God of increase and abundance. Being faithful with what God has given you will bring increase and abundance into your life. Ah, uh, Pastor, you're crazy. No. Faithfulness equals equal excellence. I said faithfulness equals excellence. I said faithfulness equals excellence. You receive the abundance of God. Here's for you by becoming a person of excellence. Excellence starts by adding value to your own life first. 
and then increase the talents, the abilities that God has given you, then the person who becomes excellent at what God has called them to do will have abundance in their lives. Don't tell me God cannot do it. I saw it. I've seen it. It is possible. I speak with confidence because I've seen it. So I'm giving you this clue. As we present our plans today, as we present, you are not presenting to pastor. I don't have the magic to do the magic ones. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. <laughs> I got Jesus. I got Jesus. He who gave you the potential, the talents, don't rely on your paycheck. It's not enough. God has given you a dream and that dream will keep you lead you into excellence. God gave you talents and abilities to achieve your God-given dream. It is up to you to steer the gifts that God has placed inside you of you to become excellent to what God has called you to do. When you adopt this attitude of excellence, when you adopt the mindset God wants you to have, the mindset of increase, and when you are consistent, in the action and you believe that what you have started doing God is behind it you will receive kingdom results that Jesus has spoken of in the parable of the talents and that result is abundance we saw it in 2 Corinthians 9 8 he brings abundance if you push this into the future when you grow up enough, don't be jealous of those who are almost there. It is the time for wealth transfer. We need to do more for the kingdom. Who are ready with me? Who say, Pastor, I'm ready to advance the kingdom with my own wealth. I don't mean this church because even if you don't bring money here, God will still do it. In your own way, wherever God is going to send you to become one of his own generals, who will stand to build that orphanage? Who will stand and say, God, send me to do it? Have a right attitude is key. If you are here, you say, Pastor, I'm here. He called me, I have an assignment. And I know what to do with the assignment. Stand up with your plan. Stand up. If you say, I came with my plan, he called me. And these kingdom principles... I'm part of them. I'm part of them. Don't be afraid thinking pastor will, will get rich when I, I you know, and I'll be, don't worry about me, I'm fine. I'm fine. I want you to do this for yourself. Do this for yourself. You're going to go tell God, my plan is here.